Hello, in this video we're going to show you how to configure Direct Admin for the first time. So the first thing you need to do is log in to Direct Admin using the admin username. Once you're logged in as admin, go to Server Manager and go down to Administrator Settings. Okay, so in here you go to server settings. First, set up your server's host name and the NS1 and NS2 name servers. Down here you could configure the time zone. So in my example, I'd want to use London You can also set a max username length. Now just save my changes. And in security settings, you could configure some of the additional settings for security, um, such as enable automatic lost password recovery. And then on email settings, you could set a daily email limit, things like email. So this will stop certain users from being able to send spam. Okay, once you're done on here, go to extra features and go to custom build two. Okay, and what we want to do is go to edit options. And then the PHP one release is the default version of PHP that's used. So I always set it to the latest version. It's best to use the latest version and let users downgrade. So I'd say for stable wise, when I've made this video, the latest stable version is PHP 7.4. You can change that. Just click the drop down menu and you could choose other versions, including PHP 8. You could choose to have FPM, fast CGI, light speed PHP, etc. So yep, start, I always recommend start with the highest and then use lower versions as secondary options. And then you can also set the PHP time zone. So again, I think I'll use London, which is Europe stroke London. And then once you're done, Click save on your changes. So this is just save the configuration. The next step after this, we will um, build those products. And then you'll get the screen tick once the changes have been made. Okay, so before we build that, we'll have a look at MySQL. So if we're to use MySQL, it'd be MySQL version eight. Or we'll choose MarioDB set to 10.4. So I want to use 10.5. So we'll select 10.5 from the list. You then choose if you want to use MySQL or MarioDB. So set it to MarioDB. And then you can set up things like backup locations here. And I'm going to save them changes. Scroll down a little bit more. And we could choose if we want web server we want to use. So in this demo, we're just going to leave it as Apache. But if you wanted to change it to, let's say, light speed, you will just tap light speed and then enter your serial number here. So for example, we just put it set as trial. It will give you a trial. I think it's 15 days long. Um, but in this demo, we'll just leave it on Apache. And then these other changes you can set here. Okay, so you can disable PHP My Admin if you don't want your users to access it. And then you can also choose what versions of WebMail you want. If you want to offer Squirrel Mail, RoundCube. So I'll leave that as default because I personally prefer my customers to use RoundCube. So again, you could change things like your Spam Assassin updates. If you want to use Zim, change your FTP server. If you want to offer AW stats and web browser, so set AW to yes. And I just change that to no.
Finally, we want to install some PHP extensions. So we'll install IonCube. So we'll set that to yes. That's quite popular. Set OP Cache, IMAP, um, Imagic. Okay, save that. Okay, and then the last change we're going to make in here is to the cron job settings. So this is for automatic updates. So switch off notifications because you don't be getting any emails whenever little updates are happening, otherwise you end up getting them quite often. Set this to yes. So if you want to update um, direct admin, you want to update things like PHP builds when new versions come out. And so let's have a look at the web update is, you know, we'll leave that off. The Cloud Linux we're going to look at in another tutorial. We'll just wait for that to finish. Scroll back up to the top once done. Okay, so go back to the Update Software tab. Okay, so showing all software's up to date, but it's not. So let's give it a moment. So it's detected what we're going to be installing. So these are just the changes that we made earlier. Click update all, and this will start the process. This can take five, 10 minutes, depending on how many products it's got to install. Once the process is done, you'll see all software is up to date. Next thing I'm gonna show you is how to configure your php.ini files. For example, you may want to make modifications to memory limits. So we go to System Information and Files and go to File Editor. Here you'll see all of the configuration files. We scroll to the bottom. You could see the PHP versions that we've just enabled. So I'll just give you an example on PHP 7.0. Okay, so we could see all the configuration in here. Uh, we'll just scroll down, it's usually around the middle. So yeah, this is where we can make changes. So for example, you can increase the maximum input time, max execution time, so let's just change that to 180. And then memory let's set to 128, that's good enough, but let's try just changing that to 256. And then we'll just scroll to the bottom and save those changes. do have to enter the server's root password. Once you've made those changes, we'll go ahead and we'll make some changes to the firewall. So if you go to extra features and go down to config server, security and firewall. The first thing to do is to make sure the firewall is running. If it's not, you can make, you can just enable it down here. And then I recommend whitelisting your own IP address and if you use WHMCS or any other billing software, the IP address um, of that server. So this looks very similar to CSF on other control panels, such as cPanel. Okay, you should now have the basic settings for direct admin set up. Please continue to watch our other video tutorials to learn how to convert from CentOS to Cloud Linux, how to set up Let's Encrypt, how to migrate away from cPanel to direct admin and more. Thanks for watching.